He said, I'm not African because I was born in Africa. But because Africa was born in me, Africa was born in him. And he also said, action without a thought is empty. And thought without action is blind. And he also said, it's clear that we must find African solution to our problem and that this can only be found in Africa United. Divided, we are weak, united, Africa could be, could become one of the greatest force for the good in the world. He said also, all people of Africa descendant, whether, whether they live in the North, South, America, the Caribbean, or in any part of the world are Africans and belong to the African nation. Oh my god, who said that? Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to talk about one of the most amazing men that I ever, ever heard in Africa. Today is Dr. Kram Kruma birthday. And I want to just remember you of what he has done for Africa. The advice he left for us as an African. You know, this man, he had a vision about Africa to change Africa all over. When I went to Ghana and I went to a some store, bookstore, and I was reading about his history, I even went to the place where they buried him and his wife. So it was really amazing to know that in Africa I had some men like him. I was really impressed because he had a good vision about African nation, not only Ghana. But why I'm saying African nation? Because after he came Ghana independence, he went to another country to help them to gain their independence. He wanted to unite us as one all together he didn't want us to be divided guys. i really wish that a crumb kuma was alive okay our excellency was really alive you know happy birthday to our amazing ghana first president and primary minister dr Kram kuma guys please uh i'm gonna share a video of kwame kuma so listen it till the end in case you haven't seen this video before, watch and know how great was this man and know about the visions he had about Africa. Okay, watch here. Hello, Ghanaians, the nation's found out. Sadie for Kwame Kruma. May God bless him. Ghana show boy, Africa's great song. There is an alternative to Euro-African Association with these deadly implications for Africa's independence and progress. It is in an African economic community in which we can all pull our production and our trade to a common advantage. It is not difficult to imagine that the new colonialists would des describe this as a pulling of poverty. It is, however, too simple a distortion of fact. Africa is rich and not poor. Right. As the great world that has been taken out of our continent over five centuries of despoliation and extortion, very well proved. 
Africa has immense actual and potential wealth. Gold, diamond, copper, manganese, bauxite, iron ore, uranium, asbestos, chrome, cobalt, a host of other minerals. <laughs> Our essential cultural produce have all been drained away by colonialist imperialism. Africa is far from being poor. It is Africans who are poor, not Africa. <laughs> and they are poor because of the uncounted profit that has been made out of the exploitation of their labor and their lands. If we are being baited to enter a European community, we must have something that community needs and needs badly when it pretends to offer a bonus by way of aid. When Greeks come bearing grapes, should we not look them well in the mouth? <laughs> if I may mix my metaphor, but I'm sure you get my meaning. When we, new, untried, inexperienced states, are flattered into European alliances, we enter not as equals, but as suppliers of primary products at the generosity of industrial competitors. How generous they can be, we have learned from our sad experience over a good long time. Who fixes the prices? <coughs> Who can play off one against the other by allowing the goods of associates in free of tariff and prisoner tariff on others? As long as it is possible to deal with this singly, one by one, we are at the mercy of the imperialists rather than their generosity. And we shall find ourselves in the same old cleft stake of receiving the lowest possible prices for our raw materials. While those of us who are obliged to buy their manufactured goods because of being members of the association will pay for them through the nose. <laughs> These same states will find themselves tied up in knots which will prevent their going into an open market for their needs of goods and capital investment. And above all, they will lose their option of non-alignment and find themselves dragged into the diplomacy of imperialist Cold War politics, which will operate against the independence and intrinsic interests of Africa. Those of us who cannot see through these implications can only be suffering from an intense myopia. <laughs> Within our African community, our pooled production will place us in a position to bargain for higher prices and so secure greater revenues out of which we can invest in our development. At the same time, we can trade freely among ourselves and buy from ourselves in the cheapest markets. We can turn for aid to those sources which will give us the most suitable terms while leaving us free to follow our own internal and external policy. But more even than this narrow cooperation, we need a wider continental economic plan which will allow us, within unity, to exploit Africa's tremendous resources for our common welfare and greater African development and progress. If, if we are really sincere in our desire to see the end of imperialism in Africa, then, apart even from the consideration involved in African unity, 
we should turn away from any form of association with Europe, which, through its new colonialist control of our policies, will help rather to sustain that imperialism and undermine it. It is bad enough that our economies, as a legacy of colonial rule, are imperialist controlled, and that we have to strive every means to rid ourselves of this economic imperialism and secure our development and progress on solid African foundations. This is another reason why we should come together in a unified African economic plan, which, operating on a continental scale, can make a solid attack on the imperialist domination in Africa. We should, without delay, aim at the creation of a joint African military command. There is little wisdom in our present separate effort to build up and maintain defense forces, which, in any case, would be ineffective in a major world conflict. If we examine this problem realistically, we would ask, which single African state could protect itself against an imperialist aggressor? And how much more difficult this would be when some states are allowing the imperialists to maintain bases on their territories. I have already referred to the military forces which South Africa is raising and the danger it poses for the new African states and the struggle of those still in chains. Only our unity can provide us with anything like adequate protection. If we do not unite and combine our military forces, South Africa, along with her allies or any other colonialist imperialist power, can pick us off one by one. Not only that, some of us, out of a sense of insecurity, may be drawn into making defense pacts with imperialists, which will endanger the security of us all. It follows that if we set up in Africa a common economic planning organization and a joint military command, we shall have to work out and adopt a common foreign policy to give political direction to our continental development and our continental defense. Fellow freedom fighters, you may perhaps wonder why I have dwelt at some length with these problems of the unity of independent African states and what relevance, relevance they have to our immediate problems of how to overcome the obstacles standing in the way of your own struggle and independence as freedom fighters. I think I have answered any such questions by pointing out that the dangers to the whole subject of your fight for freedom in the fragmentary state of Africa at this present time. Moreover, the moment you have achieved your independence, you will be faced with the practical problems of protecting that independence and securing your viability in order to lay the foundations on which you build up economic and social development. You must know where you are going, what avenues of support await you, which will contribute to your real consolidation and protection and meet the problems that will confront you. Those problems can best be met within a unified Africa, and it should be possible in the higher reaches of our endeavor to devise a constitutional structure which will secure, which will secure the objectives I have outlined and yet preserve the sovereignty of each of the countries joining the Union. Countries within the Union, sovereignty. Regional associations and territorial groupings can only be other forms of balkanization 
unless they are conceived within the framework of a continental union. There are existing models which can modify, which we can modify or adapt to our pattern. The United States of America, the Soviet Union, India and China have proved the efficacy of unions embracing large stretches of land and population. Yeah. When the first 13 states of America tried to promote the idea of the United States, this was ridiculed as an empty dream and vigorously resisted by many. Today, America is the foremost industrial country in the world and the states within her union number 50 states. And who would have thought that almost a hundred different peoples of various levels of economic, social, and political development could have been welded into the mighty state which the Soviet Union has become in such space of time? Such short space of time. For example, the example of Europe, which is left in confusion after centuries of mutually destructive economic welfare and competition, because it failed to build a sound foundation for common political action and understanding, should be a lesson for us all. But with the exigencies created by the shrinking of empires, the growing socialist world, and the need generated by the greater productive capacities inherent in present-day techniques, even Europe is now beginning to seek its common association. <laughs> it is paradoxical, therefore, that some African states should be turning away from their proper African affiliations to those of other continents. Rather, we should all be working ceaselessly to bring to fruition the fond hope of African unity, to which we all give lip service and to which most of us are resolutely dedicated. And now, fellow freedom fighters, let me say a few words about the sad development in what looked like hopeful moves toward the unity of the Caribbean islands. It may sound far-fetched, but it has a meaning to us as Africans. We regard West Indies, West Indians as our brothers. Yeah. For they have strong ties of kinship with us here in Africa. They, like us, have suffered and are still suffering the iniquities of colonial oppression. I think it's only right that we should show concern over any development which tends to undermine their solidarity and progress. And we have indeed been saddened by the failure of the attempt at federation. How can these little islands hope to stand by themselves in the future any better than they have done in the past? When the trend is toward the creation of bigger units of economic viability, it is most distressing to find that some of our brothers across the Atlantic seem to be unaware of the vital needs of the widest possible federation, drawn together by a central government with sufficient powers to make the principle of unified progress a working possibility. It will be tragic, yes, tragic, not only for the West Indians, but also for Africans and other people of African descent. If the islands in the West Indies were to remain apart, for we have reposed so much hope and faith in the emergence of the Caribbean islands as the United States, free and progressive, federated in strength and purpose, and contributing substantially to the total success of our peoples. I hope that the West Indian leaders, who are men of learning and progress, will see the folly and danger of this disuniting development and are ready the process for the good of all concerned. Yeah. Here in Africa, 
the increasing activity of freedom fighters all over the continent is one of the most hopeful signs of the victory that must crown our efforts. Men and how to take what is not ours? But we have a perfect right to fight for the birthright of freedom and the ownership of our land that has been filched up from us and is being illegally withheld.